have the exact ones we wanted. Yeah. But also that Finland has a background in playing um, large, large scale battles on armor, 100 yeah. versus 100. And so. Um, I think that there could be a bright future for them if, if this format continues. I'd love to see that as, as, as the meta develops and as more teams have a chance to play on this scale. Yeah, exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now jumping in for the second time today to Arangel. Remember, this is the second map, so maybe if you tuned into Miramar and then tuned off, Miramar did not end, it crashed, and so we are running back the second map, the Greek map pick, and they decided to go with Arangel. And this time they're dropping in a much different fashion to... I mean, the playing trajectory is different, but they're mm. dropping in a much different fashion to before. They're still sending some people towards military, and hopefully this time... And funnily enough, it looks like Turkey are reacting to that as well. They're, they're yeah. putting some people um, close to that location. I like how they're jumping because they did the same thing last game, which initially gave them the full controls in Middle yeah. And they knew that they're going to sort of focus on the western side. But they sent people down there as well to say, nope, you ain't getting this bridge either. Boom, we'll take it too. So a smart plane coming out from the uh, Greek and Cypriot team. And as we said before, they now know what not to do. Mm. You cannot give these Turkish players any room to work with. And the Turkish players are challenging for light control straight away. They've put some players on that northwestern tip mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the military iron. Bilham yep. uh, also there. Two players across have made it over. And where, where has the circle gone? It has just popped. And I'm curious to see if we're going down south once more. Oh, no. There's a slimmer of a chance that it could end uh, up down it, there, but that, yeah. that's, that's unlikely. It does favor the Turkish, though, mm. quite, quite, um, quite massively. Based on where the, the circle first lands, you can, if I remember correctly, slightly predict where it might end up or have a, have a rough estimate of the place that it's going to end up being, right? To some sort of extent. To an not extent. Really. So not really, not really. So it doesn't... Husky is in the red zone. We it's just like, cancelled the market. We had to talk about it. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, of course, of course. No, that's something maybe that I'm... Not remembering correctly, I thought that depending on where the circle first lands, mm. it's not going to suddenly like, switch to the other side of the map. It can. Oh, can it can still do that? Well, I mean, it has to be within the like the wide circle, obviously. No, that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It so cannot go an... anywhere else outside of the white. Yeah, circle. exactly. Yeah. That's what I meant. So, to an extent, within that white circle, um, you 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 need to center around there. You need it to. It can go anywhere within the yeah, white circle. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I was trying to reference. Yeah. 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 Nothing. Uh, no shiftings coming out of that. Koski, all by himself, he is in the house for now. Probably wise to stick around for a little while longer, because not only is he in the red zone, but he's also by himself, so should he get knocked? What I think we need is um, a circle that that centers over the sea, all right? And we're going to have aquatic battles. We're going to create oh, yeah. some navy steel, all right? We're going to put diving into the game, yeah. harpoons, knife fights underwater. It's going to be like James Bond. Yo, I was going to say, what's o James Bond? Monster Ball? No, Monster wasn't Ball? it in, in Octopussy where he's in, in the sea? And I think it's Monster Ball when they're in the water, like fighting underwater. Oh, okay, cool. Well, a good film. Great action. It is, it is, it is. It's a, yeah, it's a good movie. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's ever going to, I don't hope it's ever going to be a thing. No, yeah, there I, was I, a meta. That was probably back when you were casting PUBG as well mm. for season one. There was a meta where you would just go in the water. Yep, you yeah. can't get shot. No, I, you, I can't. You could jump in the water. Everyone would do that. But yeah. fortunately, they have nerfed that to such a like, rough, insane extent that nobody ever goes near water unless if, like, it, it's like this really early in the game. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. No, I, I'm, I'm memeing. It's just a, a cool image in my head, right? Like 64, I've always wanted harpoons. 64 yeah. men underwater with breathing apparatus. <laughs> Battling it out. There was a game made for that, like an underwater battle royale title. It was kind of an indie uh, oh. Steam kind of Steam Workshop thing, but okay. uh, there, there was a game made for that. You can probably find it somewhere. But uh, nonetheless, this, of course, is PUBG, the best of all the battle royales that has ever been made and ever will be made, uh, I hope and think. Um, but, but for this circle, I mean, Turkey has actually got all their players, except for two, inside it already. Not the same could be said about the uh, Greece and Cypriot side of things. I'm just sort of sitting back waiting to see what Greece and Cyprus do in this situation. Yeah. The, the circle has the majority of the Turkish team inside it. And the Greek Cypriot players are very spread out. Mm -hmm. And they've got a very wide arc going from north to south along the east. Yeah. The um, observers there are saying that they'll go over the bridge by cube and go down over Everest. But I am actually thinking that they're going to go south around and into the... Uh, into the circle around, like swoop all the way around down south over Milta and then come in from down there. Kind of the exact same thing that Ukraine tried to do against them that ended up not working. But um, but maybe they can they can they can they can pull it off better. All right, yeah, that was that's, that's my better at least. Okay, I I um 
I've just got to sit back and, and observe and watch and, and, and see how things develop. Yeah. Cur- red zone? Currently got a lot of Turkish players in the red zone, but they're all safely inside or going between housing. Oh, and all there, yeah. ta- what, t- taking a dash whilst the explosions are going off. It's a scary thing to do, but... Yeah, uh, we saw it not work out for the American players when they lost. Oh, yeah, yeah, they, 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 yeah. They, 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 they learned it the hard way. The explosive way. <laughs> explosive way. We are seeing players coming over the northern side, so uh, there's a little bit of scouting being done by Chester up there. And oh, he actually does go... Uh, uh, he does He does, He does. does take a, a, a rocket to the face. I'm hit, I'm hit. Yeah, he'll get picked up, though. And he gets a one more red zone to follow it up. <laughs> oh, exactly. <laughs> red zones like Pachinki, that's just how it is. Yeah. Getting caught in a red zone is always a uh, scary moment. You're hoping that the air... Who is, who is doing the air striking? Who is this third force on the battlefield? Oh, it's, uh, it's Brendan. Like, it's player unknown. It is player unknown. He has, unknown. like, a computer at home, like, okay. when he's traveling around on his laptop. And he has, like, a... You know, like when you, you, know, you, you know one of those guys that have, like, way too many tabs open in Google Chrome? That's me. He has, like... That's true, okay. So he has way too many tabs open of games... And he just constantly switches in between them and taps the circle everywhere. Like, it taps oh, the red zone everywhere. Okay, all right. Yeah. That's, that's, that's actually what... I think that's what he's hired to do within, like, PUBG Corp. Just he, well, he's throw like red the, zones He's like people. the god, right? He's the overseer. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. He's, like the, he's like the artillery employee. <laughs> that's, like, his job there. I wonder if there is actually, um, like... Um, what's it called? Not story... Um, lore? Lore, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For who's creating those airstrikes. And there, I'm sure there is. I'm sure there is. Yeah. It's probably fan made. I don't think there was ever a lot of uh, a lot of lore thought put into the whole game. I know there is some, but not a uh, not to such an extent that. Uh, is there an RP community in PUBG? I'm sure there is. It must be right. I'm sure there is. The citizens of Yasnaya. It's uh, Yasnaya. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a thing. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No engagements yet, ladies and gentlemen. Everyone taking their time. Mr. Korakas riding off into the distance in his. Dusty Darcia. And it's working and clearly has good suspension, so... Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's Honor! That's his name, right? Oh, yeah, and R- I think R- it, R- R- Honor. R- R- Honor. Um, Honor. Clearly a slow start, but we all know what that means. That the slower the beginning... Because, I mean, inevitably, at least 32 people will have to die. So we're just delaying the uh, the inevitable. We're just making that end game chaos that will commence at some point even more of a uh, of a thing. Chin Chin now Ooh. pushing down straight through. Oh, is he going to go for the thousand days? Ooh, he's jumping out too. He wants the kill. Was his teammate there trying to crash his car into into a ten thousand days? Look at that. He wants the first one. He wants the first kill of the game, but ain't doesn't gone land any shots, unfortunately. Yeah, not this time. Goes back to his uh, bucky chauffeur and says, "We're going this way." He just like points his arm. Go that way, peasant. <laughs> 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 oh, Myth Rain down the there captain. too. Imagine Whoa. that. Imagine captain battle. Like yeah. everyone stands in the square and chants, and they go pan against pan in the middle for the win. Yeah, uh, he was actually getting chased down by a lot of the Greek Cypriot players. There, it was a convoy. But he seems to have gone away without a scratch. That was a thing back in the day, right? Instead of having a full-on battle between everyone, like in medie- medieval times, they would bring their best warrior into the middle, and whoever won that battle would win the overall fight. So no, no oh, more that people had that, to die. That was an actual thing? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. It's not just like a Hollywood made-up thing, but this circle sure is a turkey thing, because, um, oh, sure, we have some uh, Greek and Cypriot players up north, but th- there's a long way to go for the rest of them. And they're all like they all have to cross a field in order to get into the circle too. This ain't gonna be easy for Greece and Cyprus. This could be a double Irangle Turkey win. But then again, I mean, we did have Turkey in a bad position game one two that they ended up winning. So nothing, uh, uh, nothing, nothing's nothing's uh, determined yet. But it's gonna be hard, that's for sure. Yes, we know the Greek Cypriot team are capable of amazing mm-hmm, comebacks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just uh, overseeing the battlefield as a whole here. Mithrain still whipping hard. <laughs> Yep, it's just drifting around in that the US there. Infisial taking some fall damage there. That's what happens when you have a bike and you decide to jump off of it at full speed. Do you think that's what he did? Yeah, most likely. Or tried to do a cool backflip that we unfortunately didn't catch and then he also fell off and died at full speed. Yeah. In the end, dying at full speed. Code Marco here, who's also been 
a literal outlier in the sense that he's away from his team, often mm. doing recon. And that's he did that last game too. Yeah, and that's yeah. currently what he's doing in between uh, his own team and... Sorry, no, in between Nifo and uh, a little squadron of Turkish players. What do you think the idea of that is? I mean, Code Mago, he did the exact same thing. We kind of thought he was just an AFK jump when he went far east, had to go military, took the boat over all by himself. And Sound cues, perhaps, there. and just rough know. information Maybe gathering. Maybe like a set of goggles that nobody else has uh, has found yet, or like a, a sniper with eight times, and just but no bullets, just looks around to uh, perhaps. see if you can spot people. Perhaps. I, don't perhaps. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But uh, interesting strategy, nonetheless. I like Let this push from... Uh, oh, from God, the, the, the Greeks love to run each other over. Mobsy taking out Pearsos. I think we've seen that the most from the Greek yeah. team. Yeah, that, that's... Uh, I mean, that, to be honest, when you cluster yourself up that much, you saw how many players were kind of in the same small area there. You have like six or seven vehicles. Everyone's like, okay, we're rotating now. And everyone's trying to run over to their vehicles while everyone else is rotating out. Issues like that can happen, but for sure it's a rookie mistake to do and it can cost you. I mean, it can cost you the win in the end. And that is, if I'm not mistaken, the first knock of the game. BSD. From an actual... From Fenerbahce <laughs> onto Nazgel. Bullet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first bullet knock we've seen so far. Mm. Can you create... Yeah, he's in the house. Shouldn't be uh, too much of an issue. But we have kind of gotten ourselves somewhat of a front line now. Yes, but on both sides. What are these Eastern... Um, Greek and Cypriot players going to do though? Are they going to maneuver all the way north to their teammates? Are they going to make it, maybe go south to make a flank? They just aren't. I don't think there are enough players to make a valid like second front at this point. Yeah. So that is one, two, three, four, seven of them. No, eight. It's two, two and one. one. Yeah, two yeah, in the, eight the last of one. Them. Eight players. That's not enough. I don't think it's still almost a third. And we can see Ritor Zerg looking behind. Um, themselves on the Turkish side. Yeah. So they are aware that something could be coming from the flank, from the rear. They are prepared for that push from Team Greece, Cyprus. Mm. Yeah, clearly they have an, uh, an idea. And also these vehicles, I mean, obviously they're not, it's not, it's not Teslas. They, are, they aren't that quiet. They're, yeah. they're, on the contrary, rather noisy. So you will you will indeed hear them as they, uh, as they maneuver around. Mm. That could be a good drop thing. coming in. Electric car and PUBG that moves completely silent. <laughs> that would sounds be OP. so OP. It sounds, <laughs> exactly. sounds completely OP. <laughs> but then it's maybe more fragile. Perhaps. So if you get spotted, you get killed faster. Hmm. <laughs> Could be a thing, we, we won't know, and it probably won't be either. But um, this is the, we haven't really talked a whole lot about these crates, but clearly it's a thing, and it's a... Um, How much of an advantage can a crate give you in 32 versus 32? A ton. The fact that you can tank those many more bullets, and the fact you get the ammo, and also, I mean, ghillie suits. That uh, could be the difference maker. We, ha we I do remember we spectated a player on... Um, Vikendi yeah, he was proning up on the hills Vikendi. there. Was it Vikendi? Yeah, no, no, it was, uh, it, was, uh, it was Miramar. Miramar, yeah. It was yeah. Like on the side of yeah, the Yeah, and he was under the hill, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And he had his ghillie suit on. Okay, so the uh, Greek and Cypriot sort of flank here, the uh, the reinforcements. They took a few shots over towards Rita Lel and her teammates. And uh, then as their position was revealed, they realized, you know what, let's just join forces with the rest and uh, make our way on up. Here we go, guys. The teams now banding together really creating strong front lines on both sides. Now, for the most fair fight, because I would assume to see the fight probably unfolding with the next circle popping, right? Yeah. Where would the most fair circle here be to you? Like, what, what would be the most fair way of doing this? Are we throwing everyone out in the open, or are we tossing it over to one of these two teams? Um, so, looking at the map, uh, the quarry sort of Forest seems... South. Yikes. No, not, not, not that <laughs> Yikes. I mean, if it's centered around where Magebane and Negriano are... Yeah, yeah. It wouldn't change too much because the circle would probably land close to the edges of where both teams are currently. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was thinking Swarm too. Thank you, Observers. Out west because the guys from Turkey could still set up by quarry, but there's enough cover down on the western side that uh, that the Greek and Cypriot team, like players might not be... like. They will be won't be spotable from the uh, from the quarry players anyway, so that could be a fun fun way to throw things out towards the western side. But of course, we don't know. It's all uh, completely randomized and uh, and algorithmed by the uh, the gods of PUBG. We, mm. we won't know. But it's interesting. It's, it's always fun to see where could we get the best kind of uh, even skirmish going on because circles do play a big factor, especially when you have so many alive in the late circles. Yeah, and of course we know the circle decides some of that, but. Yeah. Regardless of the circle, if uh, one of the teams has the right choice of 
movement and positioning, mm. they can even the odds themselves depending on their uh, decision making. Yeah. I love the way that the Greek and the Cypriot team have split out, though. They don't have a lot to play for. They don't want to get stuck on the northern side of the road, and they're trying to sort of go into smaller groups. You see pretty much group, group of, uh, of three uh, individual units down here trying to see if they can get some sort of ground because the Turkish players, I mean, they're not pulling back. They're not disengaging in this one. They want to be able to contain them north and circle. Well, I mean, diagonally, pretty 50-50 split. Yeah. Both teams are able to rotate into yeah. that circle with without coming under fire or being some, at a disadvantage. There is somewhat of a height advantage, like high ground advantage in this favor of Turkey, but they took that mountain. I mean, they, the uh, Greek and Cypriot team could have done that, but they were not the ones to get it. And uh, there's a lot of open field on the Greek and Cypriot side of things, so they might all have to go around the northern side, try to see if they can sort of uh, claim that mountain to themselves. Claiming mountains, climbing Everest. Yeah. Get to name it, maybe. Doesn't have you no know, name tag on it. It, it doesn't like the, right now, the does Greek it? and Cypric mountain or the Turkish mountain. Mm. You won't know. Some tenacious fighting going on here between Mithrain, the general of Team Turkey, trying to snipe into the buildings that some of the Greek Cypric players are holed up in. Checking behind himself to make sure there's no push from behind him. That in, could also be a thing. In See the if mines. you can flank some players around the south to uh, do, maybe not like take out a lot of players, but at least just sort of disrupt the focus so they need to fight on two fronts. Because this is late game enough that even three, four players can disturb that uh, focus quite a bit. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that in the maps we've seen so far today, that the pace has been so much... Um, I mean, the average pace in, in technically three maps. Mm, two, mm. remember, everybody at home, this is technically the second map. Yeah. No, this is literally the second map, but we've seen three because of the crash on Miramar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the pace between the, these these two teams has been the most steady so far. It's uh, yeah, they it's everything on the line. We're in the finals. Yeah. There's too much to lose to just try and sort of YOLO your way in there. And they know they're up against a really good opponent, both of them. So there's a bit of a bit of respect coming in there. But also, I mean, as we saw from Turkey, if they do get pushed up against that wall, both these teams have the the power and the will to commit to it anyway. So it's not that they don't dare go aggressive. It's just that right now they're saying, you know what, we're in a good spot. There's no reason to try and force it because we're up against guys that can really hit their shots. Yeah, and we're seeing um, something that's happened in the other maps as well where the battle starts off with long-distance engagement yeah. and steadily the, the rotations into medium and close battles and, and and now yeah mocking j fps getting a knock onto chester as the two forces meet across this hill we still need that little spark to uh, enlighten to what, the what, what will be this big oil pit we're looking at right now yeah. maybe that double triple nate knock coming in could be the call to say go 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 send in the cavalry because right now when I mean, you see code marco he went up tried to throw some nades oh myth went back down to myth rain saying buddy buddy i need your weapon can you please just uh, and then he said no and then he just shot him so it's fair it's it's one of those i'm the captain i'm i'm the ruler and maybe a little mutiny attempt there but it clearly didn't work the way he wanted it to code marco and Shaxi using a grenade there to sort of push back uh, the Greek secret forces. Shaxi now pushing up and knocking Guts, but in return, Nefo puts him on the ground. One for one. And this is it. The oil pit is starting to light, and it's the Greek team that are getting the more significant knocks. Uh, but two, both teams lose a player completely. Yeah, look at the push around coming Oof. from the... Uh from the this could be what the they nades. need. I mean, this could be what they need. They need some sort of room because, as you can see, the circle has gone pretty, pretty much bang center on where they are right now, right? It is up north. They have the area to play around, but they need to somehow get this push on up. And they know there's a lot of um, the uh, the Turkish players that are still down south. If they can make the push and take out enough players early to force it into two individual fights, they will have the upper hand in both. Indeed. But now they're being forced back. It down. looks like the Turkish force um, have been made to yeah. retreat slightly, give up some ground. Smoke's coming down now to disorientate both teams on both sides. So this is also a huge field to so have to push through. <laughs> Look yeah. at this. I mean, and they have we, high ground up there. It's right? so interesting the way these battles develop, where it it does become a case of two fronts and then a no man's land in between. Yeah. And you need to sort of 
corral, as, as we were saying yesterday, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the enemy team into a position where if you are going to make that push, you're not going to be uh, vulnerable out in the open and you can move across the land that was formerly dangerous um, in safety. The thing for Greece and Cyprus is that if they are forced to push hard down south in just a moment, which could happen, but it could also shift north, they don't have vehicles. I mean, so even though we have this dead man's land, it has to be on foot. And they will need a hell of a lot of smoke grenades to grant just some sort of cover trying to make this run. Because we know the Turkish players, they're great at shooting, as we can see in the kill feed. So are the Greeks, but they will be the ones running with the weapon on the back while the Turkish players are just tapping away towards them. Yep. Knocks occurring on both sides. Smash Bay and 10,000 days there. Good off angle. Indeed. All the way down by the road. One minute to go until we'll see who this circle potentially could favor. It could also once again just go dead center and force them even closer. But honestly, I think right now at least, if you look at where you have the um if you look at where you have the Greek and Cypric players right now, they have probably the margin of the circle percentage-wise. So even if it goes center, they can still stick around to this hillside they're on. But once the Turkish players are forced out of the forest. <laughs> <laughs> if the Turkish players are forced out of the forest, they will have no cover at all. You can see it up there. They're already on the edge of the tree line, and they're pretty far down south. Yeah, Yumba we just saw making a big rotation uh, to the side of one of the Turkish task forces squads. He could act as a distraction. He could get completely behind them. Yeah, he is really pushing up there. Yeah. He's by himself, though. Kind he of is. limited how much pressure you can put as a solo player. Yeah, but it's also critical information, right? For sure. Uh, and it could be. Using to know uh, exactly where everybody is. It could be him just forcing for 10 seconds yeah. three or four players to look the other way that can allow for the... Oh, look at this. Look right now. This. So the circle has just changed. It's centered even more just as the teams are collapsing on each other. Yeah. And we see three knocks in favor of Turkey. Yumba returns. He gets a complete kill mm -hmm. on Lipsin, mm -hmm. actually. So that flank did work out, in a sense. And he's still on his feet. The oil pit has been ignited. And there is a battle happening ferociously in the middle of the circle. See the damage coming in now. This is going to be so interesting to follow. All these Turkish players that are sitting in the mountainside might just have to push down that bit further, which will push them out into the open. But for now, the Greek players are holding their ground. Yumba did everything he could. He's trying to crawl back. I save rest. Save rest. You can come pick me up. Easy peasy. Yeah. But ain't gonna happen, buddy. You're down and out. Indeed, 28 to 27 to 26 now in favor of Turkey. The Greek players seeming to come off worse in this exchange. This is the battle that this map has been building up to. We're 23 minutes in, and it's hard to say exactly where this could go. Circle control is going to be very important here. There's no water close to them, but there is this big no man's land in the middle, and that's going to be the area, I think, that decides the yeah. battle. Whoever forces the opponent to make the risk to go into there if they're not necessarily safe. And it's the Turkish team pushing up. Huge knocks coming out there. Pullman returns, taking out Shish, but it's really Turkey now piling on the damage. As soon as the Turkish players get within nade range, now they're sending down the cavalry from the mountains as well. They know they have the numbers now. And this is where we talk about the Turkish team. One team, one unit. Move us one and get those kills together. Look at Big the nade. kill feed lighting up. And they're now within nade range as well. This is so rough for the Greek players. They're all pinned down in this and they're corner. And they've ended up in that no man's land, no man's land surrounded by Turkish players who have much more preferential at, yeah. uh, at angles. And it's the Turkish team that are doing so much work here, so much damage. Um, and as they continue to move, they stay active, not only getting the kills, but getting even more advantageous positioning. And I think this one, Toby, is all said and done. Yeah, they're completely Whoa. swarming 